So now let's understand our next type qualifier that is volatile. So volatile is a type qualifier in C used with variables to instruct the compiler not to invoke any optimization on the variable operation. What is a variable operation? So variable operation is either read or write. So it tells the compiler that the value of the variable may change at any time with or without the programmer's consent. So the compiler turns off optimizing the read write operations on variables which are declared using volatile keyword. So volatile is very much helpful in embedded systems code in order to reduce the bug. So now let's see some example of volatile effect. So for that, let's create one project. So I'm going to my IDE and uh, let me create a project. So this project I'm creating for my target, STM32 project. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create one variable. Let's say uint8 underscore t data one. And I'm going to initialize this data one to 50, let's say. And after that, I'm going to create one more variable, let's say data two. And what I do is data two is equal to data one. So here our goal is to understand the volatile keyword effect. I copy data one into data two, the same code once again. Let's say data two is equal to data one. So here you can see that this is actually a redundant C statement. This is not required here because the data is already copied into data two. So executing one more time doesn't make any sense. So what would you do if you are a compiler? So you would generate instructions only for this C statement. So you would be ignoring this C statement. So that's one type of optimization. So you just optimized to decrease the number of instructions. But let's see what compiler does. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to debug this. So the code actually is in O0 optimization level. And let's see whether compiler really generates instructions or not. Let me check the disassembly and here it is. So for data one, so we are actually putting 50 into data one. So yes, that is a store instruction. 50 is stored into this variable. That's correct. And copying data from data one to data two. Yes, first that is a load instruction. That is the value is loaded from the memory location to R3 register and after that there is a store instruction. The value is stored into the variable data2 and again it generated these two instructions. So these are actually redundant instructions. These instructions are not actually required but still compiler generated them because we are using O0 optimization level. Let's use O1 optimization level and let's see how the disassembly looks. So let's explore the disassembly and here it is. In the main function, the compiler removed all the instructions. So it just kept this statement. So code is not generated for all these C statements. So why is that? For that, you have to again think in the compiler way. So of course, this is a redundant C statement. So if you remove that, then this much is left. Again, here, all these are redundant C statements. Why? Because so you have created variables, but you have not used those variables in the program. So all these are unused variables. So why do you create variables in the program? You create variables in the program to use it in your program to do some operation, to pass some argument or to receive some argument. So here you are not doing anything like that. So you have just created the variables, you just initialized them and you just left it. All these are actually unused variables. So that's why the compiler actually didn't generate any instructions for them. That's why you see only one instruction in the main that is for this for loop statement. So now the question is being in optimization level one, how to tell the compiler to generate instructions for these C statements? We do that by using volatile keyword. So tell the compiler that don't do any optimizations on these variable operations. So you can tell that using the volatile keyword. So just make them volatile. So again, I am actually mentioning the volatile keyword after the type specifier. So now here data one is a volatile data of uint8 and data two is also a volatile data of uint8. Let's compile and observe the disassembly. 
now the optimization level is still 01 and I'm going to debug this code so here it is compiler actually didn't optimize the operations on these two variables so now you can see the instructions are generated for uh, data 1 and data 2 operations so what's the value of data 2 it is 50 data 1 is 50 that's correct so that's why by using volatile we enforced the compiler not to invoke any optimization on these variables even when the compiler is working on higher optimization levels let's again examine this code in o3 optimization level and let's see how this goes let me just debug this code so here it is o3 optimization so even though o3 is a very aggressive optimization so look at the code generated for these operations they are not optimized so the takeaway from this lecture is very simple by using volatile keyword so you can enforce the compiler not to do any optimization on a variables operation and we will understand and analyze more on this feature in the coming lectures so when to use volatile qualifier so a variable must be declared using volatile qualifier when there is a possibility of unexpected changes in the variable value so this scenario we saw in our pin read example so for the variable pin status there was a possibility of unexpected change so who does the unexpected change the user the user may change the state of the pin pa0 at any time so that's why that is a case of unexpected change so that we should use volatile so we'll use that in the next video so the unexpected changes in the variable value may happen from within the code or from outside the code or from the hardware so use volatile when your code is dealing with below scenarios so first one is when you are working with memory mapped peripheral registers of the microcontrollers when you are using multiple tasks accessing global variables in an autos multi-threaded application when a global variable is used to share data between the main code and an ISR code in all these scenarios use volatile generously so for other cases volatile is not required especially for these three reasons you should use volatile now our pin read example actually falls under this case we were actually accessing the memory map peripheral register so we'll see that how to fix that let's understand syntax of using volatile let's understand couple of cases the case one is volatile data for example if you have a variable let's say my data then you can convert this into volatile data using volatile keyword so you can use this method first mention the type specifier and then mention the volatile keyword and then write the variable name so this is the preferred method or you can also use this no problem both are identical and now how do you read this so my data is a volatile variable of type uint8 so now the case 2 is non volatile pointer to volatile data so this is the case we use most frequently in embedded system programming when we deal with memory mapped uh, peripheral registers this is similar to uh, const so here this is for the data and this is a pointer so here p status reg is a non volatile pointer pointing to volatile data of type unsigned integer 8 so what's the use case of this so this is a perfect case of accessing memory mapped registers so use this syntax generously whenever you are accessing memory mapped registers in your microcontroller code so by using this syntax basically we are telling the compiler that the data pointed by this pointer is volatile in nature that means the data may change unexpectedly so that's why not to do any optimization on data read or data write operations using this pointer so the case 3 is volatile pointer to non volatile data so the syntax is this one and the case 4 is volatile pointer to volatile data that looks something like this and uh, as i said these are rarely used so we will not be discussing about these syntaxes the exercise right after this video for you is go back to the pin read code and try to resolve the issue which we encountered in o2 optimization
So now you have to use volatile that in order to make it work under O2 optimization level. I'll see you in the next lecture. Hey, welcome back to the lecture. So now you have good idea about volatile keyword and now let's try to use that in order to fix the issue with our code. So that is with our pin read example code and we know that this application actually breaks when we activate the O2 optimization level. So when we were debugging this through disassembly, we came to know that the compiler has generated instructions where this code is executed only once. So processor is not reading this memory address again and again for every iteration in order to fetch the new value. So that's because a uh, compiler has done an optimization on this address. The compiler has uh, assumed that the data at this memory location will never change. So, but now we have to tell the compiler that the data at this address can change unexpectedly. So that's why let's change the declaration of this pointer. So here we have to mention Olotile. So now compiler will not optimize any read and write operations performed on this pointer. So that would solve this issue. But I said one thing while explaining the theory that whenever you are accessing memory mapped peripheral registers, use Olotile generously. So that's why let's use Olotile everywhere. So for all these pointers, let's use Olotile. Olotile for the data, not for the pointer like this. So all these are actually pointing to memory mapped peripheral registers. So here as well. And this should fix the bug. And now let's try. So it compiled successfully. And now let's check the optimization level first. This is O2. That's correct. Now let's just debug this code. So now here you see it is now going to read the fresh value from the port A input data register. This should work now. So now let's try with optimization level, let's say three. Yes, it works. You can see that the pin status is changing. So every time it is reading from this address. So that's how you just fixed a bug in the program using Olotile. And in the next lecture, we'll see how to use Olotile with the interrupt service routine. Hey, welcome back. So we just explored about how to use the Olotile qualifier. So we explored the case of using Olotile keyword with memory mapped peripheral register access. In this lecture, let's explore this case. That is when a global variable is used to share data between the main code and an ISR code. So now let's see how you can use Olotile with this scenario. Here I have a project 008 button ISR and this project uh, is available in our Git repository so you can download from there. So let me just explain this source code. It is very simple. There are two main functions in this code. So let me just maximize this. So the first function is a main function and the second function is the ISR. So this is the button ISR. This button ISR will get executed whenever the onboard button of the board is pressed. So what we do in this ISR is very simple. We actually set the global flag. So G button pressed is a global flag. Here it is. And that will be set and the ISR exits. So that's the only thing what ISR does. So here's a main function. So what main function does is it is actually trapped inside the infinite loop and for every iteration the main code checks this global flag and if this global flag is really set that is by the ISR if it is really set then it prints how many times the button is pressed so far what it does is it actually just uses one uh, count variable it just increments that count and then it just prints that uh, count value to indicate these many times the button is pressed so far after that it resets this global flag so it is like it invalidates the flag and again the flag will be set by the isr and again this if condition executes and then printf will be printed like that so here is a small delay so this delay is for button debouncing 
So this introduces some delay until button debouncing gets over. So these are the memory mapped uh, peripheral registers being configured and accessed in this uh, project. So if you want to reproduce this code on your board, then you should be using STM32F4 discovery board. So if you have some other board, then you have to modify this code because different boards have different uh, pins where the button is connected and also the interrupt configuration changes. So you cannot simply download it on some other board and you can make it work. So if you have a discovery board, then you can try this code. Otherwise, uh, please identify the places where you can use Olotile in this project to make this application behave as intended because this project works only with the O0 optimization level. So the moment you change the optimization level, this application breaks. Let me show you how to run this code. So first, uh, let's make sure that uh, the optimization is none. And after that, let's build the project. And now let's debug. And after that, uh, go to SWV ITM data console and make sure that this is checked and let's start the tracing and after that just run the code the code is running and press the button and here you can see that it is printing the button is pressed four times five times six times like that so this is working properly let's change the optimization level let me terminate let's change the optimization level to o3 let's start the trace first let's start the tracing and then hit run so now let me press the button once here it is it printed 18 times so i just pressed the button once but it printed 18 times so that means there is something problem with the code let me press the button once again before that let me just clear this let me press one more time here you can see that it just printed four times so the application is not behaving properly. So you have to fix this. So identify the places where and all you can use Olotile to fix this issue. I'll see you in the next lecture. Hey, welcome back. And in the previous lecture, I actually gave you a small assignment to identify the places where you can keep uh, Olotile in this application. And we know that this application breaks in O3 optimization level. And now let's get started. Let's analyze this code. First of all, as a rule of thumb, all these are memory mapped register addresses. So that's why use Olotile generously. So let's use Olotile here for the data pointed by these addresses. So I have to use Olotile here. Fine. So that's the first change you should be doing. So never assume any function. Go inside and check the code. Let's see what button init is doing. It is just modifying these uh, memory mapped registers. No problem here. We actually made them all Olotel. So it is taken care already here. Next, while one, there is nothing to do here. And this is again modifying a register. And after that, that is a global flag button pressed. So that's why this global flag or global variable should be made volatile according to our rule of thumb because it has the potential to undergo unexpected changes by the ISR or by the multiple task, etc. in a multi-threaded application. So that's why as a rule of thumb, we'll make it volatile. By the way, this is also a global variable, but this is not shared between a task and an ISR. So that's why I need not to make this volatile. So after that, actually we have a for loop. So this for loop is being used to introduce a small delay for the button debouncing. But the compiler will definitely going to remove this. Why? Because compiler thinks that this will slow down the application. The compiler is absolutely right because compiler doesn't know what is our requirement. Our requirement is to compensate for the button debouncing by introducing a small delay. So for us, this delay is really required, but compiler doesn't think in that direction. So what compiler thinks is the I is simply incremented to some level and afterwards I is not at all used anywhere in the code. So compiler thinks that the operations on the I is redundant. So that's why compiler will consider this loop as redundant. And it also tries to optimize it because optimizing this will make application faster. But making application faster will break our application. So that's why we have to tell the compiler not to do any optimization on I. 
so that's why we have to make i also volatile here so after that this is a function call so no optimization is required here anyway it will get called and then we are invalidating this flag so operations on this flag will not be optimized because it is already volatile that's it that's how you fix the code by using volatile keyword so first you have to remember all these three cases where you should use volatile generously and after that you should also remember this case where if you have empty loop the loop variable has to be made volatile in order to skip the optimization and i hope you understood about the use of volatile and uh, in the next lecture let's discuss about usage of constant volatile together i'll see you in the next lecture so in the previous couple of videos you understood about the constant volatile type qualifiers and its usage so now let's discuss about usage of constant volatile together so you can also use both constant volatile qualifiers in a variable declaration as per your goal so some people think that you know const is the opposite of volatile there is nothing like that so const and volatile are entirely different don't try to compare them so if you think const is opposite of volatile then it is wrong so you should not assume like that so both are entirely different type qualifiers for example consider this statement so here how do you read this pireg is a const pointer pointing to volatile data of type u in date so here const is used with pointer just to guard this pointer from unexpected changes from the programmer so this is just a case of defensive programming here so where we are guarding pireg using const and we are telling the compiler that the data present at this address may undergo unexpected changes so not to optimize any read and write operations on this pointer by using this volatile so that is this is a case of constant pointer and volatile data so now consider this case here so how do you read this pireg is a const pointer pointing to volatile const data of type u in date so here this may be confusing volatile const so the meaning of this is the data pointed by this address is volatile that is it is subjected to unexpected changes but the programmer must not change the data present at this address so that's the meaning of const volatile so const here is for the programmer not to change the value present at this address and this is for the compiler not to optimize the read and write operation on this address let's understand the case of reading from read only buffer or address which is prone to unexpected change so if you are reading from a read only buffer or address like in the case of uh, input data register so input data register is a read only register you should only read from that you should not modify that so in that case you can use this complex syntax so in that case you can use this so in this statement the data at this address location should not be modified by the programmer because it is const but the data at this address may get changed by the data coming from the external world the data may come into the input data register let's say from an external world like from the protocols or from the network or from user pressing the button etc so the address can still undergo unexpected change but the programmer should not modify it so in that cases you can use const volatile so i hope you understood about uh, using const and volatile together so now let's go back to our pin read example and let's see whether we can able to use const volatile together here it is not actually required but still if you want to guard these pointers then what you can do is you can convert this into const pointers here so you can convert all these into const pointers and after that this is actually a port a input data register and for the input data register programmer should not write anything so that's why you can even make this as const volatile so that's the only change i would like to make and uh, that's it so that's how you can use const and volatile together but you cannot make these uh, statements as const so this is wrong if you do this what happens compiler will throw some errors you are trying to change the read only location so you cannot do this so use const volatile only for read only memory addresses 
so with that note i would like to end these lectures on const and olotype and uh, i will see you in the next lecture